Welcome to this session friends. My name is Yogesh. In this session we are going to discuss on AWS CLI. First thing friends, what is AWS CLI? We all know CLI stands for command line interface. So AWS CLI is a unified tool to manage your AWS services. Next thing, when to use AWS CLI? Last week I was having conversation with my friends. They are graphical interface lovers basically. They asked me what are the benefits of CLI over graphical interface because most of the users love uh, graphical interface that's easy but in my opinion AWS CLI is easiest and uh, perfect way if you have to manage your AWS services. Couple of things which I can think of like using AWS CLI, you can automate the AWS service build, configuration, and you can manage in perfect way. Next thing, operational documentation is very easy. What operational documentation mean? Let's say you have to tell someone uh, to check a couple of parameters of uh, a configuration for a particular service. How you will explain? Log into AWS console, click on the service, Select that particular field, check what is the data inside that field. So that's lengthy way, friends. If you are using AWS CLI in single command, you can send your query. If you want to modify your append anything, again, single command will do modification work for you. So that's easy, friends. Next thing, AWS CLI is easy to use and manage. When I say easy to use, what it mean? Uh, let let me give example of myself. I am a system admin from last 12 years. In most of ex my experience, I worked on command line interface because that's easy. I love it. So to me, it's easy. And in cloud field, what I found, or what's my opinion, most of the cloud admins or cloud engineers, they moved from Unix background. And uh, even from Windows background, they use PowerShell. So I believe uh, they will love AWS CLI. And it's, it's easy to manage, friends. If you know syntax for one particular service, that's similar for most of the services. So that's easy. In the pre-request is we need uh, operating system. Operating system can be Unix, Linux, or your Windows. Then you need a Python, minimum version requirement is 2.6.5, higher is always good. Then you need connectivity with AWS, then you need PIP. Little bit about lab setup here, I am going to use server AWS MGMT which is running on uh, CentOS 7. This server will act as AWS CLI management server. Couple of things, but they are not limited what we can do using AWS CLI. You can spin up new instances. You can power them off, power them on when required. You can destroy or terminate them. Similar thing you can do with S3 services. Then you can do it with IAM users. You can create new users. You can manage them. You can delete them upon whatever your requirement. Similar thing you can do with all services. Friends, I'm sure if you start using CLI, you will love it. You will not touch graphical interface until or unless with CLI that work is not possible. And I'm quite sure with CLI, you can do everything. So friends, first thing we have to generate access keys for particular access ID. What it mean, uh, let's say you have to log into some Windows server or Unix or Linux servers or some network device. You need a username and password. So similar, you're going to interact with Amazon services and uh, you need uh, Amazon login credentials. I got one old key here. I'm just deleting it. I don't want to use old key now. I'm deleting it. Let me show you navigation. That's a one time like to generate key. First time you have to log into this graphical. Otherwise after that, Never you never need to log in uh, to this particular Amazon graphical interface. So let me show you navigation friends. 
So this is the console that you will get once you log into Amazon AWS services. Here you have to click on your username, then click on security credentials. Now this pop-up message came that uh, get started with IAM user. What it is recommending instead of uh, using default security credentials, create IAM users, assign them role, then use individual user for particular task. That's a recommended difference. But this is my lab setup and I'm going to show you how we have a uh, configuration path uh, required to be done for connecting to AWS API. So I'm going to use default settings. I'm not uh, going with IAM because my plan is to cover IAM in next videos. So I'm clicking here, continue to security credentials. So this is the screen you will get after clicking on uh, that particular task. Okay, so to expand it, click on plus. Right now there is no key, no active key basically, all keys are deleted. I was playing with uh, this AWS CLI from last three, four days, so I generated multiple keys and deleted. That's up to you. And it's recommendation from Amazon, change your AWS keys after every 90 days. That's a best practice. And never share these keys with anyone. If someone go to your keys, he can log into your AWS account, he can destroy or do any type of harm to your account if they want. So to generate a key, click on create new key. One thing, if you want to display on your screen, you can click on show access key. It will display access key ID and actual access key on your screen. I don't want to do that because I'm recording this video. You will see all the contents. So I don't want to give you option to log into my session. Here I'm downloading key file instead. This is CSV format file. I'm downloading it. It's downloaded. I will read it. I am just pausing my screen. So I can uh, keep a note of uh, access key ID and actual key. I'm just pausing my screen, friends. Okay, I have downloaded the key. I'm just clicking on close. So let's begin with technical session, friends, now. This is a server which we are going to configure as our CLI server. First thing which I told you, uh, we need a operating system. This is CentOS 7. You see EL7, that's CentOS 7, Enterprise Linux 7. Next requirement, we need Python, minimum version 2.6.5. Let's check what is the version, if Python is installed. If Python is not installed, you can simply use yum install Python. It will install uh, minimum 2.6 point something, uh, more than five, I'm sure, because on yum repositories, uh, we got 2.6.7, I believe, by default. So this is Red Hat 7, it got uh, 2.7.5, that's good. That's on higher side, it should be good. Next thing we need uh, connectivity, friends. Uh, this particular machine got connectivity to internet. Uh, to show it to you, I will just do NS lookup, sorry. So if I typo, NS lookup on aws.com. So if you see resolution is working, I'm using Google's public DNS here. I don't got uh, my own DNS, so I'm using Google DNS. Next thing, friends, you have to install uh, Python pip. Python pip is available on EPEL repositories. Running yum install Python pip. This is a Python pip. It is getting installed from EPL repository. These are the dependency packages. They are getting from uh, base repository, which is default for CentOS. So friends, uh, pip got installed. Now, next thing I have to install AWS CLI using pip. Friends, I'm not sure whether you have heard about pip or not because I found most of my friends, they are not aware what is pip. So to explain in short, pip stands for pip install Python. And pip is a package management system used to install and manage softwares written in Python. So, and uh, pip is very popular tool now. So you should uh, have little bit or basic understanding on pip. So pip is downloading the packages. It successfully installed AWS CLI. 
here if you can see this particular bit and it installed a couple of other packages also which are interrelated with the AWS CLI. So friend that bit is done. Now to check AWS version you can type version and this output is already displayed here 1.10.66 is got installed and uh, similar here I just shown you two way how we can check AWS CLI version on a server. So friends this bit is done. So now we have to configure the authentication keys or you can say access keys on this server so it can communicate with AWS gateways or AWS API servers. To do so we have to run command AWS configure. Here access key ID. Right now there is no access key in the database. It keeps configuration in database. Database means that's a simple config file. Not a complete database. That's a config file. So friends, uh, I'm not going to show you what key I have to type. I'm just giving example. Here you have to type access key ID. This access key ID will be replaced the access information you just downloaded from Amazon site. So I'm just for your reference I'm typing some dummy data and this will be your access key and uh, next you have to specify a region that's up to you whether you want to specify a region or you want to keep it uh, none. None mean uh, no default region but I will specify US West 2 as region. Why? Because uh, I'm in Sydney in Sydney, there is no EFS service released as of now. I want to use EFS service, so I'm just taking it with US region where the service is already released and uh, it's working. So I'm specifying region US West 2. Default output format, I'm setting it to none. What it means, uh, the output which I get, I will get from AWS CLI in which format I want. So three supported ways, JSON, text and uh, table. I will discuss it later. So friends, uh, this is the way we can set up the keys. I'm just pausing the session so I can uh, set up the actual keys. I'm going to run same command again. I will add actual key ID and access key here. Rest things will be same. So I'm just pausing my screen friends. So friends, I have configured my keys. I just run command AWS configure. I added my actual key ID and uh, access key there press enter that's it so friends uh, key configuration is done next thing we can verify whether communication is happening using those keys or not to check that you can run AWS that's a normal command AWS EC2 EC2 is the service I'm just checking describe instances describe instances sorry I, I don't have any instances of now so what I can do I can describe regions because that not need any instance ID describe okay so friends if you see this is the output which I got from uh, this particular AWS CLI command that was only for testing whether I can communicate with the AWS APIs using the keys which I just configured sorry you can see my key okay so here I will I will delete the key which I recently used. Okay, so here if you can see these are the reasons. This format is JSON format friends. Uh, as I said output, you can specify output as table here. This will be uh, in the table format. The first output was JSON. If you want to see it as text, so you can use it in your scripts, that's up to you. This is a text output. So friends, what it means? Our configuration part is done. Using the keys which we downloaded, we are able to communicate with AWS servers or you can say AWS gateway or API gateways. So friend, next thing, you have to save these keys somewhere. So whenever you create uh, or new session, they are accessible or they are automatically appearing there. To do so, friends, uh, the one file when you run AWS configure, one file is created in the home directory of user by whom you are uh, running the command. So in our case, it is root. I'm running this command at root. So if you see this file got created, it got uh, one entry which is default and then reason 
is equal to us west 2 there are no access keys or access id you have to add it manually there to add it you have to follow this syntax let me show you here just editing this file okay friends so same thing i have i will replace it uh, with my actual key id and actual key so that was for reference like you have to write it i'm just pausing my screen so i can update the actual key id and actual key here okay friends i have updated this file with my actual key id and uh, access key so this is done so now friends uh, we have to secure this file securing mean uh, only root user on this server can read the file so let me check what are the current permission here it got six yeah six zero zero so that's fine permission is good always keep it to six zero zero if you give a read writes to a group or some other user what it means they can read your data and i'm sure you would you wouldn't like that someone logging on to your aws account and doing some funky stuff so next thing friends uh, we have to because this file is created we have to configure it uh, in our uh, shell so whenever a user logs in uh, these settings will be imported to the his session so i'm adding it in roots bash rc so export aws configuration file the file which is having my credentials so in this way whenever root user logs in uh, on another session or open a new session this will automatically import the data so friends this was the way how you have you can configure communication with the uh, aws api servers using aws cli thanks for watching this video in coming videos i'm going to discuss on other aws offerings so stay tuned and uh, thanks a lot for watching a big thanks thanks friends